Us. Us. Come on. Good evening. Genki I hope you are Genki Des. Uh, welcome. Good evening to Thursday, uh, the 4th of February, I think it is. Uh, welcome to my dojo, um, otherwise known as the kitchen, and tonight's karate in your own dojo lesson. Um, looking forward to tonight's lesson. Been looking forward to it since Tuesday because Tuesday I was buzzing. Literally, I ran upstairs after my lesson and I said to my, uh, my lovely wife, Debbie, and I said, that's amazing. I really enjoyed <clears throat> Tuesday's lesson. Um, but as you know, certainly my students do anyway, that I love kumite. In all its different forms and guises, I absolutely love it. And uh, I was buzzing on Tuesday and even lasted into Wednesday morning, which is great. Um, so that was really, really good. So this evening, we're going to continue with Kumite, but we're going to do a different variation this time. Um, again, I think this is probably, I would say, one of my favorite parts of traditional karate. OK, it's not Ju Kumite, so it's not sparring, fighting as that we did last Thursday. And it's not basic Kumite. Makes you think. OK, it makes you think. And we're going to do a very traditional sort of basic version of it to start with. OK, see how we go on in terms of time. I um, don't like to rush things. We've got an hour for this lesson this evening. So I think it's important to uh, try to get all of the aspects of it correctly. Um, and I think on Tuesday it felt to me, and I don't know about you, because I, I can't get as much feedback as I used to get uh, through our Facebook page anymore. Um, but, but, but doing it in the different angles. So for me, going from one side of the dojo to the other, and vice versa, going forwards and backwards and then turning around, going forwards and backwards, I think was was uh, pretty helpful, hopefully, for people in terms of their understanding of what we were trying to do, what we're trying to achieve. Going backwards and forwards to camera all the time isn't always great. But we clearly had enough room on uh, Tuesday to do the Sanborn Kumite. So if you weren't here on Tuesday, go back on YouTube, watch the video, and you'll learn how to do the traditional version of uh, three, three personal, three-step Kumite. Um, and tonight's lesson then will be on kaishi ippon kumite. Uh, kaishi means uh, return, okay, and ippon obviously, uh, for those that know, means one, and kumite means fighting. So it's return one step fighting. And uh, as I say, it's one of my favorite aspects of karate, um, just because I enjoy the challenge, particularly against the black belts. We have a lot of fun with this. Um, but we're going to do it tonight individually, which is difficult because this really can only be done properly partnered. But we can't do that with COVID. So we're going to work on our own. And you can do it on your own. Uh, as I proved on Tuesday, we can do Kumite on our own. All you need to do is imagine the other opponent to be your better self. So you're always trying to improve yourself, always trying to get better at what you do. Um, and that's my simple thing. Don't ever try to be someone else uh, in karate or, in fact, any other part of your life. Be yourself, but always try to better yourself. And that's my mantra. I think that's the right thing to do. Or oh, I've decided it's my mantra. I've decided it on my 50th birthday. So that's the plan this evening. So what we'll do is we'll do our normal say hello to a few people that have signed in um, and wave and, and, and greet them, get, uh, good evening, and then uh, do a quick warm up. Not too long this evening, because I think we're going to get pretty warm doing the Kumite anyway. Uh, you don't quite need as much room as Tuesday, okay? So we will only ever be stepping back and forwards no more than two steps, okay? So um, just be mindful of where you are in your dojo. And remember, you can shorten your stances, okay? I'm not seeing you, so I'm giving you permission to shorten your stances at the moment. Um, and indeed, this particular type of kumite, when you're starting to go fast, you, you do shorten them anyway. Um, so I hope that all makes sense, and uh, thank you so much for joining me in my dojo. Oops. Great. Oops. Okay, so let's do a very quick warm up, then we'll say hi to a few people, and then we'll get going. Actually, let's say hello to a few people first of all. So, uh, good evening, us. Uh, good evening, Harry. Hope you're well. Us. Good evening, Tim Sensei and family Huxtable. Good evening, Sharon. Good evening, Andy. Good evening, Kevin. Good evening, Carl. Us. Good evening, Isaac. Good evening, Ken. Uh, good evening, Thomas. And uh, right, Harry. Yes. Quick update on the Lego build. No, Harry. Uh, if I'm going to be honest, Lego.com's uh, customer service is appalling. Okay. It is really, really bad. So my my build. Okay, which no one still guessed correctly. Someone's got very close, but not correct. Okay, has over 1,300 pieces, believe it or not. And I've done it all, and one brick is missing, which means I can't put the last 50 bricks on, which are kind of what makes it look like it should do. Without that, it looks like pieces of Lego. So I need that bit, I need that brick. So Harry, no, I'll give you an update as soon as I get it. Um, so you can still keep guessing, the competition's still open. What is Sensei Scoop been building since just before Christmas? I think I got it a couple of days before Christmas. Um, it's something I have a very strong passion about. Okay, for most of you that know me, I really love karate, I love my family, I love cars, and I love Star Wars and Marvel. 
pizza as well. But anyway, there you go. So it's a big build, okay? Uh, it's a big set, um, not massive, but over 1,300 bricks and one's missing, which is useless. Thanks, Lego. Oops. Okay, so just first of all, just relaxing the whole body, okay? So take the stress out of your day and just let your muscles, let your bones, okay? Not just, it's not about muscles, karate. Karate is all about your bones, your ligaments, your tendons, just drop. Let your hips, let gravity overtake them and just let them just sink down towards the floor. Okay, so with your arms, first of all, just rotating forwards, each knee, sun, shi, go, rok, si, ha, ko, jo, and backwards. Each knee, sun, shi, go, rok, si, ha, ko, jo. Okay, left arm forward, right arm back. Each knee, sun, shi, go, ro, si, ha, ko, Jo and change each knee, thumb, she, go, row, seat, heart, go, and jo. Okay, so arm stretching now. Each knee, thumb, she, go, row, she, heart, go, jo. Crossing over the back. Each knee, thumb, she, go, row, seat, heart, go, jo. Okay, taking your, your shoulders, relax your shoulders, and in fact, pull them down. Pull them down as you pull your head up. So stretching your, your neck, the vertebrae at the back. C123 upwards, I think it goes. Pull down, pull up. Don't lift your neck up, uh, your chin, sorry. Just stretch, relax, and stretch, and relax. Okay, take your um, chin. Okay, and looking down 45 degrees towards your shoulder, pull those shoulders down. And again, this helps back to neutral and look down again. Back to neutral. Okay, then take your shoulders and squeeze your shoulder blades together as much as you can. So you can kind of feel it pinching, or if you can get your shoulder blades that close, almost pinching, almost pinching together. And relax, and again. These exercises were given to me by my chiropractor and they've been really helpful in terms of me taking the stress out of where I carry it the most, which is this area, which the karate is really bad. So when I come to the dojo, I generally just relax this bit. <clears throat> but in my normal day life, this bit's very tense. So we have to learn how to control our body. Remember I've said this uh, many, many times over many, many years. Karate enables you to, to combine the brain and the mental side of the body to the physical side and, and make the best of it. Okay, whatever you've got, whatever you've been given, you can make the best of it. And if there's changes to it through injury or um, operations, etc., you can still get the best out of your body if you understand it. But that takes time, and okay, not just doing one evening. Okay, so, oh, so this time take your right leg up. Okay, use your hands around your knees. If you're wobbling too much, then bend your supporting leg. Bring your knee up nice and high, as high as you can possibly get it. Okay, then use your arms as balance. Left, uh, right foot out even, can't tell you which is right or left. Come back, control back down. So try to keep your form and keep your balance as much as you can. If you wobble too much, put your foot down, start again. Okay, so this time again, bring the left knee up. Get as tight as you can into the body. Get comfortable as high as you can. Okay, then take the arms out. Sink down your stance. Let your hips drop. Kick and hold the stretch. Back and down. Arms up, right knee up, balance, whoa, wobble, not, lean through. We call this the super person. Try to stretch your leg and as high as you can at the back, keep the knee, 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 keep the balance, keep the core strong. And good, so changing legs, changing legs, so left foot up. Keep the knee tight into the body, it's easier to control without a doubt, okay? So you can, here, if you bring your knee out, then you're gonna be fighting for balance the whole time. Keeping our limbs as close to the body as we possibly can. So this is difficult, but if you keep them above your head, it's not so bad. Rotate through. Hold that balance. Try to maintain your form. And that stretch, Akita Sensei showed me that uh, many, many years ago. And the idea of that is to uh, work on your balance, your balance. 
Okay, and your body will fight. Your body will fight because as soon as we take one leg off the floor, we, that affects our balance because the leg is a huge part of the body in terms of body weight. That is, our limbs are all big pieces. Okay, so it's really important you understand that there will be differences, there will be changes, and so your body will fight that. What you need to do is try to relax, let your core drop. Okay, and your balance will improve immensely. But it takes time. It's not something that will happen just straight away. Okay, take your feet twice shoulder width apart. So not too, um, not too wide. You don't need to go into the splits. Okay, stretching over to your right. And just hold that stretch for five seconds. And then over to your left and hold that stretch for five seconds. And pushing up and hold that stretch for five seconds. And then coming down, hands to the floor and hold that stretch for five seconds. Okay, very good, very good. Shake your legs, shake your arms, and just relax. Okay, turn facing the way. Remember, we always straighten our gear and open the other way. Make sure you're comfortable. Okay, so remember, this is your dogi. Okay, we call it gi for short in, uh, in the karate dojo, and this is your obi. Okay, mine's kuru, uh, which is black. Okay, so depending upon the color, if you're white, shiro, if you're blue, owl, if you're red, akko, go on, go on, go on. So um, depending upon the color of your obi, but your obi is your boat, okay? Um, if you're clever and you like Star Wars, you can work out the connection between Obi-Wan Kenobi and Japanese. And yeah, anyway, there's a link. Okay, so oskiotsuke, you also got to toes point out, hands by your sides. So this is a natural stance, isn't time. Okay, keep your head upright so you're looking straight ahead okay confidence is really important in karate and it helps build that as, as the more you do it and ready Oss. excellent and ready Oss. so kai kai shippon kumite return one step kumite what is it all about okay so in your head if i stand here i have an imaginary opponent near the uh, dog's blanket over there Okay, and the opponent is going to attack me one step. That's all you need to remember. I will return that favor because I'm nice and I will attack back one step. Return one step kumite, return one step fighting because I'm returning the favor. When we do kion ippon kumite, basic one step, we just set back block and counter on the spot, that's just one step, but we're not returning. When we mean returning, we mean going forwards, okay? So we are, in this scenario, with Kaishi upon Kimite, we're going to defend and then attack. So this combines the two beautifully, and this is how you start to build up that core skill in your brain and mind and encompassing everything together to become Jukumite practitioner, okay? So fighting comfortably, safely, enjoyably, all of those words, in my mind, are what Kumite is all about. So this is a really good opportunity to uh, start to hone those skills. This is where you learn timing, and this is very much where you learn distance, okay? And those two things are absolutely vital when we're talking about Kumite, timing and distance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna practice um, a very simple version of it. I think everybody keep it uh, uh, available to everyone's ability, okay? If we get time, maybe later on, I'll change it to something a little bit more complicated but we will see on time. I don't want to rush these things. I want everybody to be able to come along uh, with us on the journey uh, whilst we're online. Okay. Um, right. So, because it's kihon, it's still basic. Okay, so we still keep our form. So yoi, okay, yoi means ready. Okay. And step back, gear down, right, can I? Itch. Okay, so the Zen Kutsudachi is the fun start here as per normal, okay, and gear down, right position. So this is often our starting position in Shotokan Karate, okay. And we're going to attack first. So we are Tora to start with, okay? Tora meaning attacker, okay? And then we receive backwards, okay? So we receive when we step back. So you need to think in your head, you're going to attack someone to the head, okay? So that's Jodan. They will defend that, okay? Think about what block they might use. I think it's reasonably obvious with the practice we've done the last few weeks, okay? But once they've blocked you, they're then gonna step forward and attack you. So you're going to have to then step back to receive, okay? So this is very much about working together, which I was discussing on Tuesday, and I'll do more of that in a moment. But let me just show you what this will look like in terms of the attack and defense, and then we'll work it out together. 
Does that make sense? So, Keishu Pon Kumite, and then we just done that. We don't need to continue doing that. So the first attack will be Jodan. So as on Tuesday, Jodan, wait for the us, and you attack to the chin. Ki! Okay, and for me, I always ki. So you attack to the chin, okay? And that other person will block this with whatever block they decide to choose, but we know which one it's going to be because it's pretty much obvious. Okay, but if you've not done karate, maybe not. And then they will come back to the stomach. Block soto yuki. And counter punch. Okay. That makes sense to us. Okay. And then come back to your position here. So you attack them and they, they step back. So you attack one step, they return one step. Return one step sparring. How does that look like here, this way? Okay, so make sure with us, about your partner, you are correctly. Step back in and right. Hey, jaw down, attack itch, and defend knee. So, what does that look from the other side? What does the other person do? Okay, I'm going to show you this way to start with. So, this person. Is, is now me there, okay? Uh, I'm now the opposite side of that, so there's two me's, unfortunately. Attacker says, Jodan, us! I block the first technique, and then I'm going to counter-attack with a punch to the stomach. And they will block and counter-punch here. So if I play both parts, and it's wonderful dramatization, Jodan, us! Attack, block, us. Okay, attack, block, and then counter punch. So we're gonna we're gonna play both parts this evening because it's important to be able to, good, to be good to attack and defend oneself in karate. Remember, I've talked about yin and yang. Okay, it's that Chinese symbol. Okay, but in karate, it's very much the same thing, and that means balance. So we've got to have balance. You can't just be really good at attacking in karate. You can't be really good at just defending in karate. When I started out my fighting days, some twenty. Yes, 28, 29 years ago, uh, I was very much a passive fighter, so not aggressive. What I like to do is fight, let the other person do all of their fancy stuff, keep attacking me, and I just keep blocking it. Okay, I was quite good at it, and then I would generally win on one punch at the end of the match. Um, that, was a, that was quite successful for the first few years, being a lower grade. When you start mixing it with the purple and brown belts, things start to change a little bit, and people were wise to what I was doing, okay? And so they were waiting for me to attack. So then I had to start to learn how to attack. And when you get to black belt level, people are much more switched on and they change. They can be passive, they can be aggressive, okay? Remember, aggression is always with the control. But it's important to have that balance between the two. If you are one or the other, you're not gonna be as good. Okay, you can't be. You haven't got as many tools in the box as the other person. So unless your one tool is absolutely incredible, um, then you need more. You need more things to be able to, to do, uh, to use, okay? I don't just mean physical, mentally as well, mentally as well. Yes. So this is a really good way of working this out. So this is return one step sparring, kai shi pong kumite, okay? Return one step kumite, simple. He says, yes. So what we're gonna do is work on the jodan attack, okay? And when you attack this, when we're in the dojo and you're with your partner, it's really important that you attack your partner. Okay, there's all very well being polite and being nice and not wanting to hurt each other. Well, if you follow the basic rules, which I'm about to tell you now, you'll never hurt each other, okay? And that is very simply the same as the rest of the Kumite rules we've taught before. Everything starts us with a bow, and everything us finishes with a bow. Simple. Beyond, be, between those two things is your focus, okay, on your partner. Okay, you want to keep yourself safe, you want to keep them safe. So once you've bowed, you are engaged. Juniors, don't worry, it doesn't mean literally, okay? You don't want to be putting a ring on anyone's finger. Costs too much money nowadays. So it's important, you bow, you come up, you're engaged in karate, you are ready, okay? When you bow again, you have finished your karate. You can then, if allowed, not at the moment, hug and kiss each other and say, thank you very much for the opportunity. I don't agree with kissing, it's disgusting, but there you go. So, us. I hope that makes sense, okay? This is really important that we keep these rules. They're there for everybody's safety and everybody to help learn uh, in that correct manner. Okay, so we bow. Us. Yoi. Ready position. Both people squaring off here, both people facing each other. Us. 
Okay, one person will check their distance against their opponent by putting their arm out from a standing up position, she's in tight. Okay, they, this will be about a fist away from their tummy, their stomach. This person will step back, attacking first, and they will stay where they're going first. Now, if they say Joe Dan, that means they're attacking to your chin. If they're saying Chu Dan, that means they're attacking to your stomach. If they say My Gary, they're kicking to your stomach. If they say Kikomi, they're kicking Kikomi to your stomach. If they say Mawashi Gary, they're doing Mawashi Gary, either Joe Dan or Chu Dan. They will tell you which is which. If they're doing Yashira Gary, they're doing Yaku Mawashi Gary, if they're doing Shutuuchi, it makes no difference. They will tell you. Us, when you are ready, you will receive that with a us. But when you say us, you are ready for them to, to, to attack you. So you must be ready to receive. So remember, the block is simple. It's upper rising block. We've done this a lot of times. If you've not done karate before, it's quite simple to do. So the attacker looks at their opponent. You're on! That electrifies the opponent. Whoa, whoa, here they go. I'm ready, I'm ready. Okay? It shouldn't scare them. It should electrify them. If you say Jodan, then less so. Jodan! Correct. Okay? Electrify your opponent. Once they're ready, you're ready. And then you're ready to attack. Once they've said us. Us is the golden word. Basically means safety catches off, attack when you're ready. You don't have to attack straight away. You can attack after a few seconds. Don't leave it minutes because senseis get bored and we get annoyed with you. Okay, so, Jordan, us, attack. The person blocks strongly Agiyuki, upper rising block. And then when they're ready, when they're ready, the receiver will attack back. Okay? And again, don't think it's instantaneous. Don't think it's simultaneous. It's important that you will get ready. You're looking, you're looking, you're looking. Here they come. Block. Yeah. And then you get to counter punch to finish the scenario. Hey, and then you come back here. Okay? So to show you from a different angle, stepping back. Remember, we don't need to keep bowing. We've bowed already. We're still in this moment with our partner. Okay? If we keep bowing every three seconds, we take up huge amounts of learning time. It's respectful to bow at the beginning at the end of the, of the Kumite session. That's absolutely fine. Okay, step back, get under, right? Hey, look at your opponent. Jog down. Us. Attack. They're coming back to you now. Step back. Sokuduki. Here. Here. Kazuki. Yeah, us. And back to Shizentai, your start. Okay. So, if you're attacking first of all, okay, then you're coming back to defend. You've got to decide on the partnership who moves forward and who moves backwards. So we always say that if we attack first, then we would step back if we attack first. So in this case, you just need to decide with your partner who is going to do what, because both people end up attacking. But for me, whoever attacks first, maybe they should step back first because they were the aggressor, if that makes sense. Only, only in the fact that somebody has to attack first. We change from this side, this angle. Step back, get under right. Jong down. Us. Here. And then wait for the punch to come back. Here. Okay, here or here. You decide. You decide as a partnership. Facing back, back to you. I'm sorry if this is the, uh, not a good view, but I think it's important for some people to help learning. So step back, get under right. Jordan! Us! Aya! Aya! Okay. So I'm going to bow there because I want to discuss what we're doing. Us. Okay. So that's from one person's perspective. That is more the uh, initial, initial attacker. Okay. Um, so, so it's really important that there's a balance, and obviously the other person. Is first of all Yuki, so they're receiving, okay? So we're gonna now play that part. So, the imagination is now important. The attacker is going to attack to the chin, okay? So for me, without, yoi. My partner is sitting in front of me, they check their distance by putting their fist out in natural stance, shizentai, hachidachi, okay? We're both just apart from each other. They step back, get amber eyes, so they're in that ready position, and they look at me, Hopefully this kind of area, yeah. Jordan, us. That means I'm ready. They then attack when they're ready. Okay, so they're now going to come in. So I'm going to step back. Agiyuki itch. Okay, and then I attack back when I'm ready to a punch to the stomach. 
地下。Okay, does that make sense? I hope. I hope so. Someone give me a thumbs up, and then at least know you're still on there.、Uh, that'd be really awesome.、Um, uh, the only difficulty with doing these sorts of things is、uh, it's pretty one way, unless you put up、uh, emojis and signals. Sharon, find the emojis. Okay, find me the thumbs up emoji, and then I know you're still there. So I hope that makes sense. There's two sides to Kai Shi Pong Kumite, and that's why it's so good because it gives you a really, really good balance. Thank you, Andy Sensei. Put your thumbs up. So that's that's what's important、um, to, to, to kind of、uh, get in the mindset of this is is having that balance with your partner. It's true of all kids. Thank you, everyone, for your thumbs up. Brilliant. <laughs> I know. Don't do that on your TV because it doesn't work. By the way, your TV is not touch screen. I doubt it is anyway.、Uh, so you can generally have to do that on your phone. So two sides, defending and then attacking back. Okay. Uh, attacking then defending. If that makes sense. You have to switch it around in your head a little bit. People get confused when we start first start teaching this, and I understand that. But it is really, really good fun, and it, this creates more smiles in the dojo than I think anything else I ever teach actually.、Um, so、uh, hopefully, you know, by the end of the evening, we'll have a little bit of fun together, and you'll be able to attack me, and I'll be able to attack back. Okay, so we can do this together. So、oh, billions of thumbs up. I love that, and a smiley face. Well done, Sharon. Okay, so important then. Is your focus on your opponent? Kai Shipon Kumite shows the biggest of the weaknesses. Okay, and that is your、uh, targeting, targeto in Japanese. I think it's pronounced. Really important. Then, if you get this wrong, everything goes wrong about this. I, I, I show you an example. Sensei Mark said to me that my punches,、uh, where possible, the cameras are a lot lower than me. By the way, it's about here in terms of height.、Um, I try to punch down the lens. Okay, obviously I don't want to punch down when I'm punching to my chin, but I'm going to give you an idea of how bad punching gets. Jordan, us. Now this is you can see from the angle of the camera lens here. I'm completely off target. My target is there. Yeah, that's my target right down the centre where I should be here. So this is completely wrong. If my partner tries to defend that, essentially they're doing this. Which is completely wrong. This puts them out of alignment for their next attack, which likewise is just as bad. Us? Does that does that make sense? So when we engage with this, we bow, we step up. Person steps back, get Amber Eye, Jordan. They attack for their target. They attack for their target. It's you. Okay, here is the target area. Here, sorry for the close up. There, not here. And not here. <laughs> so that's really important. That targeting, okay, is a fundamental part of this. Most people are off target because they're so nice. Okay, let's be honest. You know, really nice people do karate. You don't get egotistical people. You don't get thugs. You don't get bullies do karate. You get people that are generally quite nice. Okay, so they don't want to hurt people. I, I understand that, but you are more likely to hurt your opponent if you don't punch correctly. Okay, so important targeting is vital. Okay, Sensei Mark will like that. So, us. So what I'm going to do is going to show you this from different angles. Okay, so you can see the two aspects from the first attack, the fence, and then from the other side. And I'll change legs as well. Okay, hopefully then if you watch this back on YouTube, you will be able to learn. From from that video, that's the idea. Is it's sort of instructional to a point. If you wish to be, if you wish it to be, you don't have to watch it again. Obviously, us. Okay, anyway. So I'm going to play the part of the receiver this time, us. Okay, and I'm going to do it from different angles so you get a feeling of what it's like. Okay, so my opponent is now step back, get Amber Eye down the block, and they're going to look at me and they're going to say Jordan, which means they're coming here. When I'm ready, us. Block upper rising block to defend myself, and then my counter attack is a stepping punch moving forwards. Ish, ayo. Okay, and then we step back. So if I face this way, okay. So my punch,、uh, punch at my attacker, Tora. Tora is facing me at this position, okay. And they are getting ready to attack to the chin, and they state their intention. You're on. Us. Block, and counter.
other side now. Attacker is there, looking at me, taking up their position. Gidan Bray, Jongan, Us, Ayo. Attackers in front of me. They step back, get them right, shout their intention. Joram! Us! Aya! Okay, so that was obviously receiving and then counter punching. And now, let's change sides. Change sides. Let's do the attack on the left side. So from here, Jordan! Okay, left side. Joram! Us! Aya! Aya! Left side again. Joram! Us! Aya! Aya! Left side again. Jordan! Us! Yeah! Yeah! Okay, so now left side receiving. Left side receiving. Jordan! In a way, relax, relax, relax. So, not so e easy doing it with an imaginary opponent, is it? <laughs> you have to think of your better self attacking you. What you have to do first of all is get the concept of Kaiushi Ippon Kumite, and that is that you are attacking someone and come straight back, or well, pretty much, yeah? Attack them, they come back. That's what you've got to get in your head, of course, okay? Now, there is a little bit of, uh, Quite a big aspect, actually, not a little bit, quite a big aspect of um, mental preparation for this particular type of kumite. And the reason I say this, and certainly uh, Andy and Mark Sensei will agree, and uh, Sensei Ian will agree, and Sensei Sharon, and that is that if you attack half heartedly with Kaishi upon kumite, with the mindset of, well, I know they're going to come back at me. So if I say, Jordan, and I kind of go halfway, yeah, and then I'm ready to catch, they won't catch me. They won't catch me, too fast. Yeah, you're crazy. Yeah, absolutely bonkers. You will get hit, Us. Okay, what you have to do is have the mindset. They're not gonna get me, I'm gonna get them. Controlled, I'm not gonna hurt them, but I'm gonna push them. I'm gonna push them hard, and then they'll push me hard. But also, the harder you push, yeah, the more they go back, which gives you more time to come back to counter punch. So we often have this mindset of, well, oh, what's the quickest way I can move? I know if I only move halfway, I can do this. And, and I certainly, when I was younger, used to uh, do that a lot. A bit like a marriage, but not the same. Okay, um, and really going for it. The distance that we sorted in the beginning by putting our fists out, it will keep us safe, and you have to trust me on this. I appreciate I can't demonstrate that to you this evening, okay? But um, no one gets hurt in my dojos because we do this correctly, okay? The idea of this is to build towards Jukumite, and you should not get hurt. Mistakes happen occasionally. People go forwards instead of backwards, and etc. That's quite a good thing to laugh about, but never have anyone really, ever, I don't know of anyone ever getting injured for doing this, okay? Certainly not in my classes. 
But it's important to have this commitment between the two people. Kanazawa Sensei, as I said on Tuesday, talked about harmony between two people, okay, when they do kumite. When, when you, uh, if you're a fighter, okay, and I, and I very much was for nearly 25 years, if I'm honest, competed at a, um, all sorts of level, uh, club, national, and international level, you, you start to learn very quickly that you have to try to make a connection with your opponent. Now, whether that might be seeing them in the changing room and sort of having a glance because you know you've got them in the next round and you know who they are, reading about their reputation, watching videos of them, okay, so in other words, sort of like a, from a coaching perspective, um, watching their previous rounds, etc. you try to learn as much about them as they are learning about you. And ultimately, if you don't know each other and you come from different parts of the world and you meet together, you have to learn quickly. But you learn together, okay? And that's what makes a really, really good, uh, makes a really good kumite, full stop, is that connection between those two people. It doesn't matter who wins or loses, it's immaterial. What is important is there's good karate, good engagement, uh, good spirit um, to, to, to make it make it work, okay? You'll only improve as a person. For me, it just built my confidence. As a quiet, shy teenager, uh, this, this is what gave me my, my confidence in life, I guess. So it's a really good aspect. I'm really passionate about it and keen that people do it correctly and understand its concept. It's best done with two people, obviously. Coronavirus has stopped us from doing that. Okay, so this time what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, Sensei Scoot attack you. Okay, so I'm going to come down the camera lens at full tilt and you're going to defend me because I'm going to attack vigorously with good zanshin, okay? That means proper vigorous application. And you're going to block me with a good aguki. And then you're going to come charging back at me with a really strong punch, okay? Which I hopefully, fingers crossed, and we're going to be able to deflop, deflect and block and counter punch us, okay? So we work together on this basis. So difficult to check our distance when we're probably 20 miles away, or maybe even further. Okay, but I'm going to attack you first, so I'm going to check my distance. Okay, my fist is now approximately one inch away from your gi. Okay, your solar plexus, that is. And from this position, I step back, gi down right each. I'm going to move back ever so slightly, and this is just so that I can probably try and get the punch in the camera lens so you can at least get an idea that I'm coming at you, not through the screen, as it were. But imagine this is 3D. So I'm now looking at you. Hopefully, you are now ready and looking at me. Go down! Now, it might be that you haven't attacked me yet, and I've just made myself a right fool, okay? By blocking you and counter-punching you, you're still there laughing at me, going, ha ha, sensei, haven't moved yet. And then when I step up to talk about how bad it was, you hit me. That happens, it's a lot of fun, okay? People don't do it as a, a way of hurting each other, but they do do it as a little bit of uh, fun, okay? Particularly the black belts. Um, the intention of this is to learn how to do it properly. So we, we're not trying to play games here. So what we're gonna do is literally like a one second delay at the most. Jodan, us, attack. One second, attack back, if we could. That way it keeps it more realistic, us, okay? So um, difficult to do down the, down the camera lens, isn't it? But not, you know, it's not so bad. Okay, left side now, so left side. So I'm stepping back with my left leg. Remember, when we talk about left side, we're talking left side attack. Okay, so this is my favorite side. So I hope you're on it and ready. Remember, we've already bowed. Check our distance again. Jonah! Aya! Aya! Keeping our form together, you step up, I step back, we maintain that distance. That distance is there, ready to go again, should Sensei say it's okay to do so. Okay? Now, it's your turn to attack first, okay? So you're gonna say Jodan, I'm gonna say us to receive you, you attack to the chin, and then I'm coming back at you like a steam train, uh, and you're gonna block Soto Ryuki Yakazuki to counter punch us, okay? So, important then, remember your focus, okay, is here. Yeah, that's where you're hitting towards, or you're punching towards, not hitting, you're punching towards my chin, okay? For me, your peripheral vision, your focus should be bridge of the nose here coming across down the, sh the shoulder points and across it, like a coat hanger, like a triangle, yeah? 
And that's, that's where you, if you carry that peripheral vision there, you put your peripheral vision in the center of that, then essentially you're gonna see the whole body move. You'll see the ears twitch, you'll see the little toe twitch. I promise you it's true. <laughs> so really important, look at me, <clears throat> step back, get Amber eye. Have the look of your face like you're gonna attack me with good speed, good vigor, good application, and uh, you're gonna make me work, us. You're not gonna go, Joe Dan, because I'm gonna go, mm, us. We, we lose the whole thing, we lose the whole thing. Lots of uh, spirit. So attack with a key eye, defend and counter punch with a key eye. Important. Us. If your voice isn't getting croaky like mine is already, you're not doing it hard enough. So you need to work harder. Hey, ready? Jordan! Us! Aya! I think I might have been a bit quick coming back there, even for an old man. Okay, now change to sides. So now the left side is a step back with your left leg. Okay, the distance should remain the same, so we don't need to worry about that. We've already bowed, so we don't need to worry about that. So again, clearly state your intention. Go down! Us! Aya! Okay, we're finished. Take a pace away from each other so we can bow safely to each other. Us. Okay. It's really important that when you're facing somebody, if you both move your, if, if we, uh, I'm on two of these, uh, my freezing cold floor, I feet are parallel. My opponent is opposite me parallel, okay? When we bow to each other, when I first started karate, we used to move just the right foot in and we used to bow. And essentially I would bow to this space and they would bow to this space. Quite often you'll see in movies where people bow like this looking at their opponent. But both of these are really disrespectful, okay? That's not the way to bow. When you bow to someone in Japan, okay, and I've been a couple of times, it's really important to understand that the bow is as important as the handshake, okay? For us, it's a good handshake. You look the person in your eye, you grip the hand, you shake the hand, okay? The bow is exactly the same. You look at your person, okay? You take your eyes off, but you make sure you bow to the person. Now, obviously, if you're less than a meter apart and you do that, you're gonna crack heads. So it's important to have that space. So I always say start around a meter and a half, two meters apart, bow, then walk in. Okay, and that just keeps good etiquette, good respect uh, in the dojo. Okay, it's really, really important. Um, please don't bow like this by just nodding your head. It's incredibly rude, particularly in the dojo. Okay, and the greater the grades, the greater the bow, really, to be honest, if we're looking at hierarchy, and in karate there is a hierarchy naturally through the belt colors, then that's the case. Um, but you will notice I do a big bow to everybody because I respect everybody the same, regardless of grade or level. Okay, it's important, I think, to do that. Uh, anyone who practices karate is somebody to be uh, respected, uh, very much so. Us. Okay, so we have uh, had a little bit of fun doing that. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Okay, if I show you from the other angle, which I'm just going to rotate this way, I'm not going to do the sides. We do the similar thing, okay? And again, apologies for my back being to the thing, but I know that some people learn really well when we do this. Okay, so my side are going to attack first, so I'm stepping back down, right? Jordan! Us! Aya! Left side. Jordan! Us! Aya! This time I'm going to defend right side. Jordan, us, here. And this time I'm going to fight to defend left side. Jordan, us, here. So just just done that for an instructional perspective. If you wish to watch this video back to try to work out what Sensei was doing, it's not always easy face to face. I appreciate that. The best angle apparently for a camera for videoing karate is over the right or left shoulder, 45 degrees, just above, okay? Really good for kata, really good for seam movement, and you can follow it true to form. Um, obviously, I learned karate by practicing pretty much every night with my sensei in his dojos, uh, wherever they were. Um, but you can learn, or even back in my day, you could learn from a thing called a book, okay? When you look at the book, it's one dimensional. It's a photograph of a position or a thing. And you have to kind of look at it, memorize it, and then turn around. And then look at it again and say, no, it was the left foot that was forward. 
No, it was the left foot and the right arm. And then you kind of had to kind of compute and train your brain to think reverse. In the end, I used to read it in a mirror, okay, or look at the pictures in the mirror, not read it in the mirror, look at the pictures in the mirror, and, then, and I would get a true reflection of what I should look like. Very difficult to do. With YouTube now, a little bit easier, okay, so YouTube a little bit easier. Uh, we've got a reasonably basic setup in my dojo. Uh, we've got a uh, light now for the dojo, which gives a bit more light now it's winter. And we've got um, one camera with three different lenses and a laptop, pretty basic stuff. I think it's about as basic as it goes for YouTube. Um, but you can get multiple camera angles, you can get moving cameras, etc., etc., etc. Maybe I don't ever want to do that actually. Let's be honest, I want to go back to my dojo. Simple as. Okay, us. So we can mix this up a little bit. We can now change it around in terms of we've got the basic concept of Kaishi Ippon Kumite. So what we're going to do is we're going to do Chudan attack first. Okay, and then we're going to come back Jodan. So we're going to switch the blocks around. Okay, so before. It was block here, and then so, so in other words, it was upper rising block, then outside block. This time we're gonna do the other way around, so we're gonna block first, and then come back to here, and then the person will block and counter punch on that last one. So we're just switching the two blocks around, just to make the brain think more. The more we stretch the brains, particularly the, you know our human brains, the more they're capable of learning, and the more they learn, end of. Okay, so trying to develop all the time is important, Repetition is really important as well because that gets the basic there. We've just done the basic. Let's speed on a little bit. Let's go to stretching the brain. Let's make it learn a little bit harder. Yeah, two weeks later, let's learn a little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. And we, we learn like that. So, attacking on the right side, step back, get and right, each. So this time we're going to attack Chudan. Punch into the stomach. Chudan! Os! Aya! Left side. Chudan! Us! Aya! Aya! Okay, so you will, I will bow there just to stop. You will see, you will see that you have to recompute the brain. Okay, you have to kind of go, oh, hang on a minute, it's the other way around now. Ultimately, if you get this wrong, you're moving backwards anyway for the first attack. And so therefore, backwards means safety because you're moving away from the punch. So therefore, its impact on you is going to be less. If you accidentally move forwards, then your hope is that your partner is switched on and they pull their punch. It does occasionally happen where things crash together like the Titans. Okay, but, you know, accidents happen and uh, usually it ends up in a big bundle and everyone laughing. Um, again, as I said before, uh, injury within this type of context of karate is incredibly rare uh, because of all the safety mechanisms that we put in place. The bow, the distance, the timing, the structure, the form, the technique, all of that is designed to build from white belt to beyond black belt. Let's never stop a black belt. Black belt's where it gets interesting. Okay, This is just your baseline, Yeah, your first row of Lego bricks going up from white belt to black belt. Once you've got your black belt, all oh, you can put in row two. Very good, very nice. Then row three for your sandan, okay? Your sandan is about 15 years training. Row four, nearly 20 years training. Row five, between 23, 25 years training. Row six, 30 years training. Row seven, if you live that long, around about 40 years training. Row eight, Wishful thinking. Us. There are not many grades much higher than eighth or ninth dan in the world purely because of age, okay, and time. Time is the thing that separates the levels of grade, okay, but also not just the belt colour, okay, or the type of belt, it, it's your understanding and learning of karate, and that's really, really important. Okay, so you can have a very, very good black belt who's been training for five years. You have an incredibly good black belt who's been training for 30 years, and they could be the same level. So in other words, both showdowns. The 30 year person, because of time alone, will have learned more, had that time to feel failure, to feel success and, and, and work things out. Yeah, the grade is kind of immaterial. It's the time trained, I think. Um, I did train with a guy that was a white belt for 
I don't, he never graded. He never graded. He stayed as a white belt. But he also was incredibly good white belt. Um, so, so yeah, don't think about this necessarily as being the whole story. Um, I train with some amazing black belts who have been training for a very long time. Okay, and they may not hold the same rank, but I assure you, they are better in many other ways. Okay, us. So should we do this one, us together? Okay, so you're going to attack me first, if you don't mind, I hope that's okay. So let's start with the bow, us. Okay, and what I'd like you to do is step back with your right leg. Okay, so attacking a Miggy towards my stomach with your right hand. <clears throat> you can tell my throat's going and I'm getting excited because the old uh, voice is going. So it's really important to attack the stomach. Okay, I'm gonna come back with my Soto Yuki and then I'm gonna come back with a Jonan punch, remember. Okay, so remember to defend yourself up rising block. If you get it wrong, have a chuckle and say that might have hurt if Sensei had been in the dojo. But you know me, I'll look after you. Okay, so are you ready? Step back, get on, Brian. Look at me, look at your intentions. Chuda! Us! How did you do? Yeah, us? Okay, good, good, good. The feedback's not great, if I'm going to be honest. Okay, you're a bit slow. Attacking left sides, tangy legs for me, please. Attacking to the Chudan, us. Chudan, us. Aya! Remember, you block here, counter punch, how do you get us? Us. My turn to attack you, if that's okay. Hey, you oi. So, right side, Migi, Ashi, Itch. Chudan, us. Left side, Hidari Ashi, us, left leg. Chudan, us, Aya, Aya. Take your face away from your partner. Emery, us, us. So, how this looks sideways, just very quickly. Right, right side to start with. The attacker is punching Chudan. The blocker receives with an outside block. The receiver then attacks Jodan. The other person who was the attacker blocks counter punches. Just change the legs, left side. Makes no difference, yes. Okay, so again, punching forwards, Chudan. Receiving, Soto Yuki. Attacking Jodan, blocking Jodan, counter punching Chudan. And as I said earlier, the bit that we can't show this evening is the timing and the distance. D done correctly, this looks nothing short of spectacular. Okay, and if you've got two younger people, okay, that are really kind of fit and sprightly. Or maybe two older people that are just young in mind and fit and sprightly, okay? And you really see the first person launch with a great punch to the face, and the other person blocks it reactionally. It's incredible, their reactions are unbelievable. And then there's a pause. And that's where the drama starts. Then they attack with this fast punch, and the other person reacts, counter punches. And they literally are stopping within an inch of the gi, maybe closer still if they're higher grades. And then they both draw forwards or backwards into their yoi stance, maintaining their form and change legs. It's really beautiful to watch, okay? And also super, super exciting if you're part of it, okay? Uh, for me, I love practicing karate. I like watching it less so. But when I see people that are good, uh, you know, particularly my students will tell you if I get uh, rather excited in a junior down grading. So in other words, I see a younger person um, under 16 doing a junior downgrade and they're really, really just making me jump out of my seat. Okay, I don't sit down at gradings. I tend to walk around and like to look at things and I generally join in. <laughs> so, but when I see two people really good, I get out of my chair. I, I feel pride. Okay, super proud of those people. Um, because this really is something to behold. It's really, really interesting to watch. Uh, 
Right, uh, Andy says you've got to zap off early. I don't know what zap off is, so I'm assuming that's a spelling error. Uh, us, but thank you for joining me. Thank you very much for joining me. So I um, hope that lesson has been okay and uh, the one on Tuesday. So on Tuesday we did Sanborn Kunite, which is three steps barring. There's a reason we haven't done five step and that is room. Okay, so we've missed that out. We've done basic sparring previously, but we'll maybe do that another week. Next week, I want to do something completely different. Maybe some kata or, yeah, maybe some kata or kion, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, hopefully you've got the concept of what we've just done. Um, on Saturday, we did a black belt uh, only Zoom lesson, which went really, really well. Um, it, we had a couple of sort of, uh, what's the word, uh, technical issues to start with, but once we've resolved those, it was really interesting. So we are set up for the Kangeku. Okay, the Kangeku, for those that don't know or haven't sort of ever heard of it before or aren't sure what it is, okay, traditionally, we would meet in the darkest, deepest part of winter, which is generally sort of late January, early February, and we would all meet in our main Hombu Dojo very early in the morning, okay, and the earliest I think we've done it was probably 7 a.m., in the snow, um, but more recent years around 8 a.m. And what we do is we have a, a long run, so we run around the dojo, so we have to run on the spot on Saturday, a week Saturday. Okay, then we train together, having a lot of fun, okay, different sort of uh, karate themed games type thing, um, practicing different techniques, different combinations. I usually come up with something a bit bizarre, I think of it on the morning, okay, so it's something usually we've not done before. And once we've finished training for about an hour, we then stop the lesson. We have a formal bow to finish, okay? Usually, we give a trophy out to the spirit of the Kangeku, and um, that might be nice to do if we have enough people join on Zoom for me to be able to do that. Spirit of the Kangeku certificate or, or the award goes to the, the person who's really, really put their heart and soul into it. And then we have a communal breakfast. It's really, really good. Parents, nans, granddads, dogs, cats, aunties and uncles, and brothers and sisters all come together in the dojo. We sit on the floor there's no chairs in there and we we have our breakfast we have big mats on the floor okay and it's everyone brings a piece where it might be so we've had bacon sandwiches sausage sandwiches um fresh fruit uh cornflakes cereals that sort of thing and and toast and all sorts of things made and we just share and it's just a wonderful community event uh, that i love and it's free we do it every year this year covid has got in the way and stops us from coming together in the dojo however i believe that we can do it online so we're going to do a zoom class OK, on next, not, yeah, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, the 13th. So that's Saturday, the 13th of February at 8 a.m. online with Zoom. OK, if you contact me, I will give you the uh, code you need to to join that. And we, as I say, we'll do a warm up. We'll do a training session. It'll be a lot of fun. And then hopefully, if you're happy to, we can stand and chat and have breakfast in our own dojos together. Um, and I'll be hanging on for till at least 930 OK, but everybody's welcome to that. OK, and it'd be just really lovely to see some people's faces, uh, particularly our junior students who I miss loads teaching, if I'm honest. Um, so that's the plan uh, for a week. So that's February the 13th at 8 a.m. And we finish at 9.30. So you've still got the rest of your day to plan. OK, well, as always, thank you so much for joining me in my dojo on a Thursday evening. Remember, we're back here again on YouTube Live on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Uh, we'll do something different next week. We try to mix it up every single week. Remember, any advice or guidance or ideas or thoughts that you'd like me to do and train train you about, then that's great, okay? I'm doing this on my own. <laughs> yeah, it's really important that you understand that I've got nobody here to help me. I'm doing what I think you maybe want to learn, but sometimes, you know, maybe you don't. Maybe you'd fancy trying something different. So uh, I'm trying to mix it up all the time to keep your interest and my interest going, okay, as we go through these difficult times. So we'll finish the lesson with a normal uh, standing bow, the dojo kun, and then say our goodbyes to people and disappear. Of course, straighten these noses. Kiyosuke. And right, us. Dojo kun. Hitots. Junkan kokan se ni soramotu koto. Hitots. Makato no michi o mumoru koto. Hitots. Toryoku no seishin yashi no koto. Hitotsu norege o monju o koto. Hitotsu keki no yo imashi muru koto. Show me, right? Sensei, os! Os! Tomo arigatou gozaimasu.
Thank you very much for joining me in the dojo this evening and being my partner. Much appreciated. I've enjoyed it as much as I did Tuesday and uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Boss, please look after yourselves. Keep safe. Be well. And uh, I will see you very soon. Oi, uh, sumasai, arigato gozaimasu. Jamatane. See you later. Oos. Bye-bye, Us Isaac. Bye-bye, Sharon. Bye-bye, Andy. Bye-bye, Harry. Bye-bye, Tim. Us. Bye-bye, Carl. Bye-bye, Kevin. <laughs> See you all later. Have a great weekend. Uh, us. Us. Thank you very much, Carl. It's very kind of you. Look after yourselves, please, everybody. Take care. Stay safe. Us. Us.